Looking for some pep in your step? Switch your body's chemistry. What you consume dictates your body's chemistry and energy. A campfire provides an excellent analogy for how different foods result in different fuels. Each fuel energizes our body differently. Imagine starting a campfire. The fire could be made of logs, small sticks, or kindling like pine needles or dry leaves. The food choices we make fuel our body just like the logs, sticks, and pine needles fuel a campfire. And the campfires inside our cells are called mitochondria. Our foods have a combination of carbohydrates, proteins, or fat. That's it, period. These three nutrients categorize the fuels used by our body. We only have three options that combine in various ways for our food. Notice what you had for your first meal today. That meal broke your overnight fast, hence the name break fast or breakfast. Sort your first meal into these three categories, your carbohydrates, your proteins, and your fat. So if we have an example of two eggs and buttered toast for breakfast, you would have satisfied all three categories with eggs being the protein and fat, butter being fat, and toast being the carbohydrates. On the other hand, a bowl of oatmeal and milk would have mostly carbohydrates and a sprinkle of protein and fat. Our energy depends on two things, what type of fuel went into our body and what chemistry is happening inside our body before we added that fuel. That bowl of oatmeal that you had for breakfast, which is supposed to be super healthy for your heart, well, it burns in your body much like the kindling or those pine needles. And it will leave you hungry and with low energy in a couple of hours. That's how carbs fuel your body. Carbs break down to three tiny baby sugars called glucose, fructose, and galactose. And those sugars slip through your gut lining and they spike a quick, hot energy. It is hot and short, and that sugar energy is intense, and it burns quickly, and then we crash. That's exactly what happens when you burn a pile of pine needles. They make an exciting moment, and they take hold of the fire and sparkle into the sky with a sizzle and a very fun to look at moment. In fact, that campfire can be seen from miles away because of all the smoke and trash billowing into the air. And then that fire fizzles out, leaving you in the dark, chilly and tired. Carbs as a fuel do the same thing. They are fun to eat. <laughs> they have the most variety of flavors and textures. And with today's technology, we grind those carbohydrates into the tiniest, the finest of particles and build a really enjoyable food in many shapes, sizes, and textures. This keeps our palate very interested and rather addicted to that type of food. As we swallow that food, those little particles of sugar slip into the system and bam, they burn in our human campfires, that mitochondria. And we have a zing of energy that runs through our system in a short amount of time. Often there's so much pleasure that comes from foods of carbohydrates that a splash of dopamine will hit our brain. And it's almost as good as an orgasm. But the cost of that sizzling fuel burns our cells the hottest. And much like that billowing smoke, the trash left over from the constant burning of carbohydrates is expensive. When cells are only fueled with this option of carbohydrates, they age faster, they repair slower, and they make more mistakes when replicating proteins inside their cells. This leads to cancers and chronic aging and an excessive amount of garbage or trash found in the cell. But after that fuel burns in our cells, we crash. That wave of energy is over and then we slump. Our brains slow down and our hunger returns and we crave for that fun fuel again. So we eat a little more and then that cycle recurs and the interval of food gets shorter. We eat every two to four hours when our menu is mostly carbohydrates. The fast burning source of energy repeats that cycle of hot and then cold, never really giving you the sustainable energy and teasing you with those moments of fun to keep you coming back for more. The blood sugars that go with that eating soar and crash and they leave a bundle of trash and some worn out cells in their wake. Yes, they're damaged. That happens inside every cell that uses carbs and that's 
every cell in our body. Got a little joint pain? If that cell's been burning carbs, the chances that pain is going to go away is nearly zero if you're on a carb-fueled diet. It's going to take a different strategy to fix some of these chronic problems. Well, what if we fuel our body from strictly protein? Well, just like that campfire analogy, this fire is not as sexy as the pine needle fire sparkling into the sky, but it's also not too hard to get that fire going. It burns with a brighter fire and less debris flying into the air, but the maintenance of that fire built from sticks is rather high. Not as high as the pine needles, but you will have to refuel every four to five hours in a body burning only sticks or protein. Yes, that's what it's like to eat strictly protein. You must eat multiple times a day. The energy from protein is not as hot or as rapid. In fact, your body has to break down every one of these proteins or sticks into amino acids. And then it shuffles them into the mitochondria. And it's a lot of work to get the energy out of a protein, which is why we really never feel that burst of energy if you're eating a strict protein diet. Yes, it's a lot of work for your body, and it's not very satisfying. The burst of energy that comes from the carbs never really hits when you eat that protein diet. Kind of like the fire when you only have small sticks. When you're on the keto diet, your fuel comes from fat. This type of fuel is like burning a log inside your fire. Fat fuels the body with a long, steady stream of energy. A solid, dense log feeds the fire for hours on end and results in very little trash in the air. The hardest part about burning a log is getting it started. If you've ever tried to start a campfire with only using a log, well, you probably sat there in the cold and the dark staring at the fire pit. Before that log can burn, it needs the right environment in the fire pit. That's exactly how the ketogenic diet works. It can be a bugger to get your metabolism burning fat especially if you've spent years on a high carb diet. Your system will be resistant to switching to that new fuel and it's probably pretty lousy at burning fat or ketones at first. Yeah, the chemical environment needed for that first ketone, that first flame, it happens in the near absence of pine needles. Once the carb fuel has dwindled down and you've burned off those pine needles, our body recruits ketones into the campfire. Once that chemistry shifts, it's rather easy to throw another log into the fire and keep the fire burning. More importantly, the fire is so satisfying. It's solid and steady and sustainable heat. The maintenance to that fire is also very minimal. With hardly any fuel being added for hours, the system keeps delivering its fuel. It burns throughout the night with hardly any smoke in the air. Yes, when several mitochondria burn ketones, energy bathes over our system for hours. The energy just percolates through the body with this solid foundation that you can depend on. But even more important, the cells that use fat for fuel, they burn at a cleaner rate and they begin to repair those mistakes that were made from that hot recurring fire that goes up and down when you fuel from carbohydrates. They start to sweep out the trash found in the cells and they put it into the fire, burn it up as useful fuel. And this leads to cleaner, healthier cells with less of that chronic problems. That little pain in your elbow starts to go away with chronic ketones. I use the keto continuum to teach my patients how to create that environment, that chemistry where ketones become the main source of nearly endless energy. If you haven't read the Keto Continuum, check it out. It's David's story, one of my patients, who journeyed through his battles and created the best environment for repairing his health. Check out this video where I read you the first couple of chapters.